can't do currently? What can't we do currently? I don't know. It seemed like they, they said... Uh, what? What? What can't we do? It said that, like, you know, now we could, if the law passed, we would have been free to... To, to accept a to, lot of money. We can be as political as we want right now. Oh, so now we can accept money for our politics. No, we can't accept money. Well, we can, but it has to be disclosed. It's like if someone buys a political ad on TV. They have to disclose, I spent this much on the ad, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so this would have allowed... So we wanted the bill to pass so we could make out like bandits. Yeah, basically. Oh! But this isn't nearly the free speech issue that a lot of people on Slashdot and Fark were making it out to be. And people in the blogosphere just busting a nut over this nothing that happened. Maybe I'll go read it more in depth to see if we're 100% accurate, because we're, basically we're what it conflicting was. with a lot of the things I read. A lot of people are Not real, that I read them very in depth. A lot of people are real alarmist about things. All right. So, um... Brown, the FEMA guy, right? What was his oh, name? Uh, Mike uh, Brown? Yeah, that genius. The genius of, of FEMA. So um, they got his emails he sent during the hurricane. Great. Any uh, uh, gems in there? Uh, all of them. All right, let's uh, hear a few. All right, all right. Don't wait. These, these can be summed up in one word. Hilarious. <laughs> Is he our new Jack Thompson? No, he's not evil or anything. He's just dumb. Uh, Jack Thompson's not evil, he's just crazy. All right, so anyway, here. In one email sent, this is from CBS News, whatever. Uh-huh. In one email sent on August 29th as Katrina was pummeling the Gulf, a FEMA public affairs uh, official tells Brown the outfit he wore on a television appearance looked fabulous, to which Brown replies, I got it at Nordstrom's. Then he adds, are you proud of me? Can I quit now? Can I go home? What? That was e- this is the email he was sending when he was supposed to be dealing with a disaster. Was he trying to be funny, or is he just that dumb? What? Ahem, ahem. CBS News correspondent Bob Orr reports that an hour later, as thousands of evacuees huddled in the Superdome, shelter of last resort, Brown fired off another email. The email said, If you look at my lovely FEMA attire, you'll really vomit. I am a fashion god. All right, so we're uh, two for two on fashion and uh, 0 for two on saving poor people from a hurricane. Um, here's the here's a good one. This is the last one I'll do. After the levees failed and the situation grew even more desperate, FEMA's point man in New Orleans pleaded for Brown to send more help. Dot, this is what the guy said to Brown. You know the situation is past critical. Estimates are many will die within hours. All right? Yeah. Just four minutes later, Brown wrote back, Thanks for the update. Anything specific I need to do or tweak? Question mark. (laughs) Wow. This guy is, uh, I don't even know what to say. (laughs) The following day, Brown wrote to a fellow FEMA employee, I feel like I'm getting the shit beat out of me. Dot, dot, dot. So uh, if we learn anything from this, it's that in the event of an actual emergency... The federal government isn't going to be anywhere to to uh, interfere with us at all. Good. They're incompetent. I don't want them anywhere near. They'll just fuck it up. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's ever some crazy disaster, like, I don't know, angels attack, like Evangelion or something, whatever the government says to do, I'll just do the opposite. I'll just, I won't do the opposite of whatever they say because, you know, I'll well, just, I'll figure out what to do best and oh, do yeah. it regardless of what they I say. I wouldn't be sitting in that dome. I'll tell you what. Uh, definitely not sitting in the dome. So uh, SGI, Silicon Graphics, isn't doing so well. Well, no kidding, because um, their computers are crazy more powerful versus expensive than anyone needs. Yep. And no one needs IRIX. No. And pretty much you can do a bunch of cheap, uh, you know, supercomputers with Linux to do better than what they give you. Hell, depending on, I mean, from what they used to give you, you could buy just one Windows machine to do some of those things now. Now, yeah. They were good back in the day when they were the only machines that could really do the graphic action. But Yeah, plus they've been real pro-open source. Yeah, they have been, but it hasn't helped them. Yeah, so I feel bad that a company like that that's they, kind of cool well, goes away. They, they're, in the, they're in the same business as Sun, only Sun has other Java business stuff. Sun SGI also, doesn't have anything else at all. Yeah, though Sun also has its uh, IBM stuff now. Yeah, but hopefully we'll be able to get some cheap SGI machines. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, just nice little... Good-looking uh, SGI machine on the maybe floor? Maybe some uh, Aeron chairs. Aeron chairs? Those aren't SGI. Yeah, but if they if they really go down there all the way... Oh, uh, they sell those to businesses, though. You can't get them. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm a business. Yeah. 
So, um, you know, Radio City, and, and every winter they have the uh, Christmas Spectacular show. Oh, the ladies kicking their legs in the air. Well, those are the Rockettes. Yeah, they're not. They're they're in the show, but they're they're not. The show doesn't. De- they're not the only thing the show has. Yeah, because I'm just I'm not interested in that at all. I don't know why. Well, I've seen the show once. It's not really the greatest show, but anyway, the the musicians. Yeah. The, they went on strike. Uh huh. That's the that because there's another strike going on in New York right now. So that's two strikes. Okay. So um, they're using recorded music. They're just playing it over the speakers. Uh, that's. <laughs> but all the people who bought tickets are... They're going to watch the show. They don't care. Do they know? Yeah. Are they getting a discount? The musicians are sitting outside the theater doing their little strike protest. People just walk right into the theater and watch the show. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that That's it. Well, at least it wasn't canceled like our uh, video game concert was. Yeah. And the last tiny bit of news do we have, is uh, Firefox now has 10% market share. Yeah, I saw that. One in 10 computers have the Firefox. Well, one in 10 internet web browsers. That's not so bad at all. It's not bad. It's at the point where you can start giving the finger to 9 out of 10 people. Yeah. People were saying that Firefox growth is slowing down. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> Shows them. So uh, my thing of the day... Mm-mm. It's not anything Mm-mm. new. In fact, it's very old. It's uh, two million or two billion years old. It's real old. And it's just something that a lot of you probably know about, but I didn't know about it. I found out about it, and it was really cool, and I read a bunch of stuff. I have no idea what you're talking about yet. All right. But in Gabon, which is a country in Africa. I never heard of this country. There is and I'm a good city, at Carmen San Diego, too. A city or an area or something called Oklo. O-K-L-O. And in the 1970s... A bunch of scientists there noticed something odd. And to cut to the chase, because I'm not going to go on about this forever, there was a naturally existing nuclear reactor there. Naturally existing? It just it happened when uh, some geological events put uranium-235 and water in such a configuration that a nuclear reactor was formed, and it reacted for thousands and thousands of years. Wait, so there's uranium heating up a water... The water is cooling the uranium, and steam is coming out? Actually, what was happening is the uranium was... Was visioning with itself? The the water was acting... Like, the stream went through this uranium. So the water was acting as a neutron, uh, whatchamacallit... Gun? No, no, no. It it made the uranium fission. It facilitated fission. But then, when it got too hot, where it would, like, it would have exploded... The water was cooling it off? No. the, The water would evaporate away into steam, and then there wouldn't be any water there, and the reaction would stop. And then the water would come back in. It was so this is just again. like a little river with a piece of uranium in it, basically. It a lot of uranium, and it went for well. There needs to be a lot. Thousands there. and thousands and thousands of years. Well, if you got that much uranium, the half life's pretty long. So you, you know. And it's a really interesting site, and they're doing a lot of cool research there because of the unique properties of the soil. It's not reacting anymore. It you know what this tells you? It, nuclear reactors are really easy to make, and we shouldn't be worrying about like Iran. Actually, crap. what a lot of people are talking about is that. This made nuclear waste. It made nuclear waste very similar to the nuclear waste our nuclear reactors make. It did? Yeah. Lots it of would it. have and, to. And you know what? It didn't get into the groundwater. It didn't contaminate shit. It just stayed exactly where it was buried. And the way it's set up is a lot like the way Well, you... didn't, like, alpha particles fly off of it and shit? Alpha particles would get about a millimeter. Well, it's, it's not releasing gamma rays. I know that. So alpha the only other... You could get some beta particles on there. Um, alpha particles are stopped by anything. Well, it's like beta a he- particles. Isn't it like a helium and a something, an alpha particle? An alpha particle is pretty much an atom that gets shot out. Yeah, a beta it's, particle it's, is an electron. A gamma ray is a gamma ray. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the, al- the alpha particle is like a helium. The point is yeah. that Yucca Mountain is very similar, and everyone who's afraid of it, all the scientists who know they're talking about are saying, look, if we bury our waste in Yucca Mountain, nothing bad will happen to it. Uh-huh. Well, there you go. And... As a result, a lot of anti-nuclear activists are decrying this as a false or a forgery or it didn't really happen or it's a fluke. We should take them to see it. I'd like to go see it. I, a Greenpeace was outside the train station on my way home today. Oh, great. They were talking about some forest crap. I don't care. <laughs> They're like, save the forest. And I was like, and then there's one guy who's always there, and he's like, save the homeless people. And I'm like, yeah, we should cut down the forest to build homes for the homeless people. <laughs> well, the thing is... Most of the logging industry outside of, like, the uh, rainforest where they're just clear-cutting and they are doing kind of bad things, 
they're actually a really good industry and 